The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, squeezably soft host, the Koala Bear of Wall Street. And of course, uh, another day, and uh, if you listen real closely, on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, you can hear the crickets chirping. It is quiet out there. I can I can feel the quietness. Anyway, the uh, S and P's off one point one point six five billion shares. And uh, other than that, just a few stocks out here moving uh, the market, but very light volume. And you would think uh, going into the last day, uh, what uh, is going to be fun buying for the month of June? Uh, be expecting probably a little bit more than this. Kind of uh, quiet out there, spooky quiet. And uh, we'll get into that later here today. As we uh, start the day off, uh, not much movement in a lot of other things either. Uh, gold is up uh, 70 cents. When we look at um, other things moving the market, uh, crude uh, 102.50, uh, they've uh, been able to stomp this market down Fairly good for uh, volatility. Of course, we've got about another two days before the EU meets. Uh, I think we'll hear just about all the announcements by 8.30 uh, morning uh, on Thursday. So um, we'll have a good hour before the markets open to digest the news of what's happening in the EU. But uh, I think they, pretty much the consensus is uh, they're going to work to uh, weaken the euro and which will strengthen the dollar. And uh, I think a lot of people have uh, set themselves up. Saw somebody uh, flying across the news that had a uh, $2.5 billion short on the euro right now going in uh, to Thursday's announcement. So uh, a lot of people throwing some uh, heavy wood around uh, going into this. But uh, for the most part, uh, we continue to watch a market that is at highs with almost no volume. Uh, and what should be the strongest, or at least statistically, the strongest part of the month. So as we continue to watch this, uh, we'll keep an eye on. Um, yes, we can. I'll be looking at that. Somebody asked to look at BCEI uh, in the uh, den. I don't have a lot of news, so we'll probably be getting to that fairly quickly. Uh, but I did have a few things out here uh, that I wanted to get to to the begin with. Uh, someone brought this up last time we were talking about uh, 1930s in the uh, market. But uh, today in uh, 1934, uh, President Roosevelt tells his cabinet he will name the notorious stock manipulator Joseph Kennedy, the first chairman of the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, Harold Ickes, uh, uh, Roosevelt's Secretary of the Interior and father of the current Ickes, or grandfather or something. Notes in his diary, the uh, president has great confidence in him because he has made his pile. He's invested all his money in government securities and knows all the tricks of the trade. Uh, government lawyer Jerome Frank exclaims, naming Kennedy is like setting a wolf to guard a flock of sheep. So uh, <laughs> whatever you think. Of course, uh, later on, he uh, decided that uh, he wanted to become uh, the uh, ambassador to England. And uh, went over there and started his uh, huge Jew-hating uh, uh, and uh, anti-Semitic rants. Uh, and, uh, of course, it told everybody that Hitler was great. Pretty much ruined his political career. Uh, and he set on to making his sons a political force years later. But, uh, yeah, interestingly enough. And, uh, yeah, I had something for this, didn't I? Mm. Oh, nuts. Yes, but uh, not feeling very good about Krispy Kreme and their donuts today. Uh, after management lowered its fiscal 2015 earnings per share to $0.69 cents from uh, to $0.74, cents, 
and that's uh, from 73 to 79 cents. So at the best, they'll be at the low end of the range, and uh, Wall Street not liking that at all. We'll get to take a look at uh, Krispy Kreme. Mm. Oh, no, nuts. Sorry about that. Uh, clicked in the wrong spot. We got two doses of, uh, of uh, Homer and his donuts. Uh, but anyway, when we look at the uh, charts of Krispy Kreme, KKD is the symbol. Um, certainly down on heavy volume already here midday. And uh, there's a huge high volume gap up. And that gap is about uh, 1420 to about 1520. And I think we're probably going to see that gap filled fairly quickly out here. I hated this stock um, mostly because down around five, six bucks, you can see there's a brilliant breakout with volume. I wanted to go back and buy the thing, and the market was just horrible, so I didn't go long it. And, of course, it went from, what, a five or six bucks up to 26 bucks. And one of these ones that it would, I would kick my and uh, flatulate myself somewhat uh, for for a while. And uh, maybe I'm feeling a little bit better about it today. But uh, one of these uh, fish that got away. And, of course, uh, probably the other big thing, moving stocks around the market on a day where there isn't much moving, uh, is uh, when MGM, uh, Impel, and LVS, all the casino stocks uh, were down. Uh, in fact, I actually had, a, uh, I had something here. What did I have? On this, oh, I set up a portfolio so I could look at these casinos. That's what I did. Oh, I just wanted to see uh, what they were off if they moved. Uh, Win was off four percent or four point three percent. MGM off three point three seven percent. Impel off five point five percent, and LVS off three percent. So LVS probably the best of the bunch here, at least uh, for the weakness. Of course, uh, what happened was uh, gaming revenue rose to 9.3%, and this is, uh, of course, the uh, officials over there giving the monthly figures May versus a year ago. Uh, they were looking for somewhere between 13 and 15% growth a year, so a lot of uh, people pulling back uh, what the uh, Ford estimates were in, that, in these stocks. So what else do we have going on out here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, BCIE. Let's take a look at that. I think I've got this up. BCIE. If I can actually type. No, BCEI. There we go. And uh, what do we have? Yeah. Bonanza. Creek Energy. Take a quick look at the profile here. Uh, can you look at BCEI for long? Um, well, certainly had a huge move. I take it that um, this is uh, J and J. I take it that he would want this thing to come back down to uh, about forty-eight, forty-seven bucks on lighter volume. Fill part of that gap up that had huge volume. On the 22nd of uh, May, yeah, 3.3 million shares. So you probably want this thing to come in. I'd love it to uh, go to probably 47, 47.50 is where you'd set up your uh, your uh, buy point on this if it came back with a light volume. Uh, Bonanza, uh, Bonanza Creek Energy, uh, together with the subsidiaries, operates a independent energy company in the United States. The company is primarily engaged in the acquisition, exploration, development, and production of onshore oil and natural gas assets. Uh, Colorado and uh, uh, southern Arkansas. Uh, oil producing assets in North Park Basin in Colorado and uh, Nakimi Patent Field in southern Arkansas. The company was also founded in 2010, headquartered in Denver, Colorado. So, yeah. Uh, didn't look too bad. Uh, of course, um, there's a few other stocks out here that I wanted to start looking at. I think we're going to have a caller in the next segment. We've got uh, three or four minutes here left in this one. So let's take a look at some of the stocks uh, that I've been watching out here. Uh, we've been adding shorts in the newsletter over the last day or two. Added a couple more positions today. 
in each the uh, longer term newsletter and the daily newsletter. Uh, the one in the daily newsletter actually cooperated quite well. It was a fifty dollar stock and was down a couple bucks uh, last time I had looked. We'll go back and look a little bit later, but uh, uh, there is some movement. Uh, not everything working that well, but uh, certainly not going the other way against us. But uh, not a lot of stocks are showing a lot of movement so far. Adobe Systems, one of the ones I've been watching, uh, along with a couple others that we'll get into. But uh, the reason I wanted to see this, Adobe kind of moved down, and its retrace came back, hit a gap. And that gap was on May 7th, $57.15, 7 million shares. So you have a high volume low out here that needs to be tested in Adobe. It came back up to the previous high from April 24th uh, at 65 bucks with 3.9 million shares, got into it with 2.4 million shares. And of course, uh, just like the rest of the market, kind of slowly rolling over. So when we look at some, a lot of these stocks uh, that have been up in this higher trading range, um, especially Adobe, it's come back into that gap uh, that started on the 13th of December last year that gap had 15 million shares, so pretty good support. But we are in an upper trading range out here. And one of the things you didn't want to see uh, was the February 3rd low as it came back into that gap with 6.6 .6 million shares, $57.32. Got tested, was pierced on 7 million shares uh, that day on uh, yeah May 7th. And that's uh, pretty much what you didn't want to see. Of course, uh, we're back up here to the top. Lighter volume again. So a lot of these stocks uh, kind of stuck in this channel uh, defined by high volume gap ups and uh, low volume uh, tests of previous highs. So we've got a lot of those going on. One of the other ones that uh, we've been watching here for the last couple of days is Oracle. I think I brought this up on Friday's show. And uh, that is uh, just a very light volume test of the April 1st high. $42 uh, even, 35 million shares. We get into it with 19 million shares on May 27th. And uh, just uh, I wouldn't call it a rollover out here, but it is very interesting to see it. Um, anyway, I, I think we've got some callers stacking up. And when we come back, we'll be looking at a couple of stocks. Let's see what we have coming up here for the next caller. Uh, SCTY, that's a Solar City. And FireEye, F-E-Y-E. -E. And uh, we've got a lot more stocks to take a look at. You can also give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And you can post a message in the den like some folks have. And we'll take a look at your stock also. Anyway, we're going to be back in just a minute. So uh, hang on. And we'll be right back. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different future contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now, you can receive a free two-week trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, 
Visit the front page of TFNN.com. Andy Hecht has just announced a live 90-minute webinar that he'll be hosting Saturday, June 7th from 9.30 till 11 a.m. Eastern Time entitled Energy Opportunities During the Summer of 2014. With the frigid winter having depleted some key energy stockpiles, Russian political tensions high, and the storm season for the Gulf setting up to reverberate through energy markets worldwide, opportunities could present themselves over the summer months that could provide huge payoffs. When you sign up, you'll gain immediate access to a seven-page report Andy has put together as an introduction to what he'll be covering so you can start preparing and get a feel for what Andy will be discussing live during the workshop on Saturday, June 7th. Andy will be advising his attendees of at least one trading recommendation in each area, including crude oil, natural gas, coal, and refining spreads and oil products. The best part is that this live 90-minute webinar is only $99. Don't wait. Sign up today and reserve your spot while gaining instant access to Andy's seven-page report right now. For all the details visit the front page of tfnn.com you've always taken the long view when it comes to investing but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose what if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk at direction funds we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And as we come back, uh, we've got John in Philadelphia on the line. How are you doing today, John? Hey, David. Um, good to speak to you, sir. I... Uh... I wanted to call in and uh, ask you your thoughts on two names that you commented on in the past. Uh, first is Solar City, that mm -hmm. is the um, uh, Lyndon Reeve, I believe, is the CEO cousin of uh, Elon Musk. Yep. And <clears throat> David, I um, I know the stock has been almost cut in half. What attracts me to start asking questions about the stock is the fact that since it's come public, uh, the stock has been in rally mode, and right here, right now, at 49 bucks a share, the stock is approaching a trend line drawn on the weekly chart that's been tested and held uh, now five times. Now, of course, the history on this name is brief, and this rising trend line uh, may not mean that much because of its uh, youth in the marketplace, and, of course, the trend line could be broken. But I wanted to see if there'd be any reason you'd be attracted to this name, either from your uh, power law vector indicator work or something fundamental. Well, uh, if on the power law vector indicator, uh, I would say that the energy was about 15% higher on the way down than it was on the way up from this uh, uh, last big move out here, which is about $42 uh, to 88 at the high. And, of course, it got down to uh, 45.79. Uh, and in that move, actually, it was 15% more energy uh, with the, than, the, than the move up that was three bucks, basically three bucks lower. So there is a lot more energy in this down leg that tends to mean 
that at the best you're going to have some consolidation before this thing rings out. Here is the fundamental view of Solar City. It is a company that without federal uh, subsidies would have never made a dime, still won't make a dime, uh, that uh, when they put solar cells on your house, Basically, every one of your neighbors is paying for that. Uh, it is not economically viable on its own. And I pretty much stay away from stocks like that uh, with the thought that there isn't a snowball's chance uh, that uh, the Congress, at least the House, will switch to Democrats. The chances of getting another one of these bills shoved through that pretty much is done by 2016 and 2017 to look for another huge boondoggle uh, for money to be pushed to these stocks. Uh, the Republicans hate it because, of course, about a quarter of all the money ended up being in a big slush fund back to the other party. So the political lines are drawn fairly strong in this. So the question is, do prices fall fast enough? And is there enough... Uh, uh, speed at which solar cells can get cheap enough uh, that they can approach what uh, you can make uh, electricity for out of either coal or natural gas. And the answer is about four times more expensive at best. And of course, there's no good storage system for it. So the question is, why would anybody want to buy uh, solar cells? I guess if you're in the mid middle of the desert, there's no um, existing uh, electrical lines to your place or you want to go move out in the middle of nowhere in North uh, Dakota, maybe the same kind of thing, although you probably won't have as much sun. The question is, is it economically viable? And the answer is no. David, I, uh, I appreciate your, uh, your discussion of that. Um, uh, I've always had a dilemma, or not a dilemma, when I do have dilemmas in understanding the uh, variety of factors at work, when, uh, when I come up with a conclusion that I'm uncertain, I've always found it for me best to uh, conclude to just stay away. I, I and, would uh, say that, that maybe if something really big happened in the Gulf or something, you could maybe make a play on this thing, but you'd have to have a huge instability in the amount of, uh, of oil coming into the market. And I just don't see that happening, especially in the United States where this company primarily gets its money from. But gotcha. uh, I, all over the globe, it's uh, even like in Germany now, the subsidies for solar energy are probably 20% of what they were um, just uh, two years ago. So these companies are going to now have to walk on their own, and it's getting very tough to find cash that uh, governments want to throw around uh, so we've got another stock we want to look at when we come back, and we'll do that with John from Philadelphia. See you in just a minute. Thank you. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? 
Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mob in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we uh, come back, we still have John on the line, I think. David, yes, you do. Still here for you. Okay. And I uh, just wanted to wrap up with Solar City. Now, the technical view. That I have is, of course, this has a high volume low at 45.79, uh, just from a few days ago on May 7th, and uh, you know, and it got 9.6 million shares. You'd love it to be down there with light volume, and you're kind of in there. So, could you do this for a trade? I think the answer is yes. Uh, but uh, I'd always be uh, thinking about uh, uh, what my exit strategy was on it. Uh, the other stock that you had talked about was FireEye, F E Y, yes, yeah, F E Y E. And what do you think about this here? What's attracted me here is, well, of course, the stock has fallen from ninety-five down to twenty-seven or twenty-six. Yep. And uh, of course, um, it it trades at a outrageously high multiple of sales. And I know uh, a insider lockup has come and gone, so there was um, uh, the threat, uh, the threat um, of impending or actual insider selling. But after it made its low at 26 within the past month, uh, I was attracted to um, uh, the advance back up to 36, and there were a couple of good volume uh, days on the rally. And we've come back at this 31 level, which is kind of like halfway back of this most recent little advance. Uh, so I've, I've been attracted because of that. 
And I'm wondering from uh, both a technical perspective and your knowledge of the business, if you can see a bigger uh, bullish case for this equity or if there's something I'm missing. Okay, this company, we're going to go back to last fall. Uh, this company had been kind of in a trading range from about uh, 35 to 44 bucks and had been going sideways. And basically the news broke on the breach from uh, Target's credit card uh, issues. And they found out that uh, FireEye actually uh, had identified it and the Target people had done nothing. And this is when this stock really started taking off. Uh, they thought was that everybody would go out and buy this thing. It was basically making no money at the time, and things really never changed. Uh, just the, the news that Target had been using it, that it, it had identified the problem, that the Target management had done nothing, uh, kind of almost uh, was uh, better for them, certainly than Target and the Target CEO. Anyway, it went to 97.35, almost all on a huge speculation that this thing would be adopted everywhere. It was not. Uh, if, if I remember the last uh, true earnings on this thing, the company still does not make any money. That's correct. And, uh, it does not. And that is something that just isn't tolerated uh, in this stock market currently, and that is a company making nothing. Uh, on the... Uh, on the technical side, you had kind of a little congestion zone between 48 bucks and 56 bucks, actually 44 bucks and 66 bucks, where it kind of came back and forth a little bit um, and bounced around a little bit, kind of broke the straight trend down all the way to 25, 58. Uh, the energy from the top down to 48, 13 was good. It was even stronger from 51 to 25. That tells mm -hmm. me that you're probably more likely looking at some level of consolidation back in here from 25.58 to 35 bucks. Now, could you get a slight move back up to 35.50? Yes. Uh, company is in the right business, which is defending retailers against uh, hackers. Uh, the question is, and I haven't looked at it enough since the last earnings report, uh, to see but where they're going to turn the corner into profitability. Uh, but uh, to me, you need that uh, 2558 tested on lighter volume or at least back into that huge heavy day down, which is right where we're at now, basically. Yeah. Right, I, right. I see that you took a, a small position in this already. I did, right at this price, yeah. Yeah, 23 million shares. And, of course, we're out here today with 4 million shares. So not a bad stab out here. Uh, did you look and see if they had options? <laughs> you know, with a stock, uh, with a stock that uh, can go up 10 and 20% within three, four weeks' time, I figure it's an option unto itself. Uh, that's true. I was just wondering <laughs> what the uh, premiums look like out here. Yeah, what no, I haven't what, checked it. What they are looking at. Hang on just a second. Uh, okay, if we're looking at uh, the 30s out here, uh, well, they're putting a pretty low, uh, that's a puts. Let's look at the 30 calls and see how much premium are in those. Okay, about three in the mid threes where you can buy the uh, calls. And uh, I didn't get the last... What's it printing out now? Uh, right at 31 even. Okay. So if you're, yeah, I'm looking at that just as there's 430 uh, calls in the June expiration month. So they're basically saying two bucks. Um, what are you thinking of taking this uh, and selling it at? Or what was your plan? Yeah, my plan was to take a partial position here at 31. The FIB 618 uh, support mark is down at 29.50, and that's coming back into a couple of daily bars in the past uh, three, four weeks that had some good volume on the rally back up. So I was thinking if I get it back down to 29.70, round out the position with um, the stop, um, uh, a stop 
uh, underneath uh, the FIP 618, kind of near 29-ish, a little above. And I know there's no earnings coming out. Uh, that, that, of course, came and went in the past four weeks, so I don't have uh, earnings release threat to be uh, uh, contending with at least for the next um, the next couple of weeks. So that's kind of my plan. And uh, the thought being is um, uh, let go a half if we get back up to 35.50. And if we happen to blow, uh, blow through that with higher volume, then be playing for a little ABC up is kind of the idea. I would love to see this stock come out with uh, uh, some sh huge short interest. Uh, in fact, right at the beginning of the year, it was six and a half days to cover. Uh, it's now down to about 1.2 days to cover. So there isn't a lot. I, on some of these stocks, I can see, really see that you could get a nice move out of here with huge short interest. But uh, interest, uh, short interest on this one's kind of low. So it's uh, if I would probably give it some more brownie points if it had a higher short interest and you could get a short squeeze started. It just doesn't look to me like you've got a lot. Um, gotcha. Could this go back up and test 35, 50 again? I think it could. Um, I just is a huge overhead in the stock, and you don't have enough shorts, at least for the last reporting period, uh, to uh, really push this along. I think we get a new short interest on this in the next day or two. If we had a lot of people short the stock in the last couple of days, have you been watching it trade? John? Not that closely, no. Okay. Uh, I have not either, so I couldn't tell you whether it looked like a lot of people were shorting this. Um, I would have loved to see, or even now, see that the short interest was actually going uh, up instead of down. It's not. It's actually going down since the previous reporting from 1.6 days to 1.2 days. So that would be one of the other factors that would make me really think this could be good. Uh, good company. Uh, excellent product. Uh, they just need to... Uh, kind of force themselves into the retail chain. Uh, technically, I can see what you're looking at. You're at fairly good support. I just, what were, what was your target on this thing or where you thought it could go? Yeah, I was looking for a rally back to the high uh, of last week, up close to 36. Yeah, I think and that's the it. off chance that, it, uh, that uh, this pullback from, 3580 down to 31 is potentially a B to C with the C to D leg higher coming right ahead. That's kind of what I'm thinking about. Yeah, I think you've got a uh, pretty good risk reward. Uh, you can see it in it. Uh, and of course, Florida would be a great place to do it. Um, and of course, uh, uh, great, uh, you know, great deal if you want to buy them. Uh, your neighbors and the government's going to be subsidizing a huge amount of your electrical bill in the future. And, of course, uh, any money that goes back to the grid has to be paid for about, uh, I think in Florida, it's four times the cost of actually generating the same power. So not only are other people paying uh, to have your solar cells installed, but you're gouging every one of them for every kilowatt hour that you get to send back to them. So um, uh, probably horrible for the United States, probably good for the individual consumer. So, uh, you know, that's basically what it amounts to. At least in Florida, I think it is. I thought I saw the number three and a half or four times uh, per kilowatt hour uh, back on the line what it costs them to actually produce it here in Florida. So, uh, uh, oil companies get a lot of money <laughs> to give them. So, anyway, uh, fairly interesting. Now, uh, of course, you need to build a system um, when we're talking about solar panels uh, of uh, storage, which you do not have, and uh, a few other other things, but uh, uh, generating electricity at someone's house is a little bit more complicated than most people think. Uh, but uh, again, you get those solar cells down low enough uh, to the right price point, it would make economic sense. What doesn't is pretty much doing it now, and if you do it, you're probably pretty smart, and uh, your neighbors are all going to pay for it. So uh, if you believe that is the right course of action, um, then uh, you're a true capitalist. But uh, I don't want to hear anything about uh, anti-capitalist stuff. Anyway, I uh, wanted to look at a few other stocks out here uh, on uh, those uh, hitting highs. 
we got a lot of these stocks that are off 50 percent and uh, I was kind of thinking of this one uh, was John was talking about uh, FireEye uh, but uh, a lot of these are in lower volume um, I mean not in lower volume but in lower priced trading channels from these huge moves down Yelp is one of these uh, this thing finally bounced fairly decently to $66.69 on May 1st. It had 22 million shares. We got into that about three days ago. And, of course, 8.6 million shares. You're probably not going to break out, at least on the first time on this. You have uh, pretty much the same volume uh, from previous lows and a nice gap down below. Um, so some of these stocks may be coming back to levels, but you certainly want to see the volume come out. In the case of Yelp, what you would really like is this thing to come down on very light volume back to the breakout area that had 12.3 uh, million shares on, what is that, uh, August 1st of uh, 2013. Uh, this thing gapped up and away. Uh, what it uh, hit a high of 52.77 that day. Uh, but that is in the gap here, about 49 bucks. What do you get back there? 49, 48 bucks on very light volume. You may have a few like fire eye setting up here. We'll be back in just a minute. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. 
We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery in pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and the power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Join Andy Hecht as he teaches you how to make money in commodities. The Commodities Hour, next on TFNN. And uh, we're going to go down here and put uh, the old heart rate monitor on the market here and just take a quick listen. Dead, Jim. That's about it. That's about all we've got. We've got a market out here flat as a pancake. Oh, what a great album, too. Uh, Head East, flat as a pancake. Uh, well, what a great album that was. I saw them not too many years ago. Uh, S&P's off uh, one point. We've got 1.9 billion shares. So volume picked up slightly, but that's going to project out to a Two four point four billion shares a day. You certainly want to see when these markets go higher and into this range, some kind of energy. We've got just about none. And uh, so we'll keep watching on this. Sometimes uh, you can just hang out here until the market does break out. Uh, I continue to think uh, we probably have a 80% chance that we go 10 points higher, uh, but a 20% chance we walk in one day and the market's already 50 points lower. And uh, that's the kind of risk reward out here that is set up with an ultra light volume market. Uh, and uh, just uh, going to be uh, one of those tough things. Um, did we look at Federal Express? I don't know if we looked at Federal Express either. A lot of these stocks up here hanging up with light volume have pulled back, giving kind of minor sell signals. Uh, not a lot of volume yet. And in, in fact, on FedEx, not a lot of volume uh, at all. 144.39 was the last major high on January 2nd. We got into that last few days. 3.3 uh, million shares back in January, 1.4 million shares now. So uh, we're up against a lot of these stocks with very, very light volume. Not a lot of people wanting to sell, thinking that uh, the Fed will put the uh, morphine uh, drip back on. Uh, if there's anybody even slightly with a little discomfort, I always like that word when uh, – uh, yeah, 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 Mr. Jones. Uh, I see your leg was cut off. Uh, and, uh, I'm sure you're in some diff discomfort. They never really, doctors never really say, oh, you're in really, oh, horrible pain. You, it could be a little, could be a little bite there. It could be a little nick. Anyway, uh, FedEx is up here, very light volume, not a whole lot of strength to the downside yet today. So could you get another attempt back up here at the highs, especially on something like this? Uh, a big uh, kind of a blue chip like company? I think the answer is yes. So when I'm looking at stocks more than likely, I'm looking at a lot of the more weaker blue chips like IBM as we watch that and uh, try to get it here if we can. Uh, I don't know what's going on here. Got a problem with IBM? How can you have a problem getting IBM? There we go. Uh, you know, this thing's kind of been drifting down. I was short for, on it for a little while, covered it where the market started moving back up. Did not take it again when it started going back down. Uh, but uh, I just you don't see a great deal of energy either up or down, down on light volume again today. So, you know, could we get another five point, 10 point rally out of this market? The answer could be yes. Uh, what you just don't see is any energy to do so. So we'll have a few stocks 
and uh, probably more of a market of stocks than a stock market. As we finish out this uh, episode of the Power Trading Editor today, just wanted to remind you that uh, we've got Andy Heck coming up. He's got a webinar Saturday morning, and I bet he's going to be talking about that. But uh, maybe he can talk about uh, what we're going to do to get uh, crude moving here, and maybe gold. Maybe do we have to go up there and kick it? kick it in the shins, get this thing moving. Uh, I'm ready for a market that moves one way or that other. I'm ready. I imagine everybody else is either. In the meantime, make sure you sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.